what you're about to get is the most powerful concept I can give you. And I know that sounds BS, but this concept is how I went from struggling to make $2,000 a month to making over $200,000 on our best month. When I was single, lonely, out of a relationship to being in a thriving one. And it's the difference between if you're gonna keep yourself in like this victim mindset asking, why not me? Why are other people more talented? Why do they get it? Versus step into your power and say, why the f not me? Yeah, why not me? I can do it. You want that belief, you want that confidence, you need the mirror principle. So I wanna give it to you, and then I wanna go through the important nuances, details of it, because if you don't know those, the principle just doesn't work. In one ear, out the other. Just like every class I took in college. But man, if you know this, you're able to set goals and actually achieve them. So what is the mirror principle? The mirror principle in one sentence, your outer world is a reflection of your inner world. Just like when you look in a mirror, you see yourself. Your dog thinks it's real when he looks in the mirror and gets all freaked out, right? But you know that's not actually the real you, it's just a reflection. So if you want to change the reflection, what do you do? You have to actually change yourself. If you raise your hand, the mirror image raises its hand. Most people struggle because they're trying to metaphorically cover up the mirror of life. Like they see something they don't like or they see their flaw and instead of like trying to change it, they just put a cover over it or they try and break the mirror they argue with the mirror or they spend a lot of time wishing that thing wasn't there in order for anything in your outside world to change it has to start with an inner transformation i want to approach this one delicately because i understand people's mental health is important and we're all on our different journeys i'm not claiming to be an expert in depression or anxiety by any means but here's what i do know that people look themselves in the mirror and they ask, why am I depressed? Why am I anxious all the time? And then you look at what they're doing. They're doing 50 milligrams of nicotine a day. They're sitting for 10 hours a day. They don't move. They don't exercise. Their diet is processed foods. They think terrible thoughts because they're consuming terrible inputs like the news and doom scrolling. Their sleep is terrible. You know, they're getting less than six, seven hours a night. They're drinking alcohol. They're not having their own experiences. They're living, watching through the experiences of others. Now you take all those nine or 10 things and you ask, why would that person feel good? How are you supposed to feel if you're doing all of that? And this is not a judgmental place. I have done pretty much all of those all in the same week. It was a hell of a week. <laughs> At some point you have to have standards and say, is this making me happy? Why don't I feel good? And you need to look in the mirror and to say, that's why I'm doing boom, 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 boom. And you know, it's not a pill I'm missing. It's not a someone coming in to save me and fix me. It's the radical decision to take a hundred percent responsibility for what I see in the mirror. The victim mindset looks for who's going to come save me. Why isn't my reflection like other people's? What does their look like? Oh, let me compare. The victor mindset realizes no one's gonna come save you. It's all your responsibility. And the flip side of this is if it's not your responsibility, whose is it? That's a scary thing to realize. Like if you're not responsible for your life, if some other people are, that's fucking terrifying. You should be anxious and scared and depressed. Like you're not responsible for your life at all. You're just sitting in the back of a car and there's some maniac driving it. Like that's a good time to be anxious and like overwhelmed. But if you're in the driver's seats and it's all in your control, that's where your real power is. And now you get to make the decisions of what you want the mirror to reflect to you. This year, I've done a ton of therapy and coaching more than I ever have, I think, in my whole life. You pay hundreds of dollars, you meet an hour a week. And in that conversation, it's not like magic happens. You walk away from that and they tell you tips and things to do, but they're not coming to your house, making you go to the gym. They're not coming to your house, making you stop thinking those thoughts. They're not coming to your house, like cooking your food for you. Like it's on you and you alone to do those things. They can help therapists, coaches, programs, teachers can help you, but it ultimately boils down to you and you alone. And this doesn't have to be isolating. There are people you can connect with on this journey where you can just, dude, this, this is tough. I'm having a tough time about this. And that can be life giving and recharge you to keep going. No one is coming to save us. That is the harsh reality.
you want some of the best dating advice in the world? Not that I'm like the expert, right? I mean, I always joke, go ask my girlfriend. She'd agree with that. She's got a gun back there. She's the best girlfriend in the world. I could not ask for a better one. And I am so incredibly happy with how things have turned out. Nah, she's, she's, she's great. There's a story I got from, I think it was The Secret. So take it with a grain of salt. That movie and book it's hated on a lot, but I think it's a good bridge to getting into some more inner work. The story in The Secret is of a painter and he's struggling to find love. So he goes into a therapist and he's talking about how there's no good women out there and all women want to use you. And all women, you get close and they're like avoidant and standoffish like this. And the therapist is going through this with them and finally she's like, show me your paintings. Like you said you're a painter, what do you paint? And not to her surprise, you know what his paintings looked like? They were all standoffish women looking over their shoulder like this, emotionally unavailable. Now, I have no clue if that story is true, but I think it does sum up this mere principle very well. Oftentimes your subconscious beliefs are what is showing up for you out in the real world. And if you never stop to question those, it's just going to be your reality. If you believe that all women are fill in the blank, all men are fill in the blank, you're gonna see more of it. You're gonna find every reason to stay where you are. What I've learned, uh, talking about relationships, not necessarily in romantic ones, but just in friendships. Um, back in my 20s, I looked in my mirror and I was like, my friends are lame. Like, why aren't they texting me? You know, I'd see people on social media hanging out or going out or whatever. Why don't my friends do that? Why don't they invite me out? What's so interesting though, is if you just take those expectations and you ask yourself, do I live up to those expectations from their perspective? Oftentimes the answer is what? No, I'm expecting them to text me to hang out. When was the last time, if I'm brutally honest, that I texted them to hang out? And what's so funny is as soon as you start making the effort to like arrange the dinners that you want, what are you experiencing? You're getting the thing you want, the arranged dinners or hanging out with friends. And what happens, I have found, is that when you start investing in your relationships the way that you want them to invest into you, they start to pour into you back. And if they don't and you try and they never want to hang out, then yeah, their lame friends find other ones that will. But this is the fundamental principle of the mirror. What you want out there is a reflection of what's in here. So it's the same thing with love. People, they want love or they feel lonely and isolated. And so they think the solution is to have someone give them the love. Ah, but it's backwards. When you actually reach out and give the love to your friends or family, what are you experiencing in that moment? The very thing you want, which is love. So the secret to really getting starts with giving. This is the mere principle. If you give it, you experience it. Real quick, if you're someone who's looking to reinvent yourself, create the 2.0 U, in 10 weeks. I'll link down below our metamorphic program. We've helped 850 people just like you go from just, you know, kind of passively watching YouTube videos to really putting in the work and getting the results they want. No pressure, but if you're into that, I'll link down below where you can learn more. Now, here's a couple very important nuances with this mirror principle. There's an old saying that anytime you point the finger, there's three pointing back at you. Right? This illustrates the mirror principle beautifully. There's a concept called projection that when we get really mad at someone doing something, it's triggering to us because not actually what they're doing, but because we have that part within us. For example, you see people who get really mad, cancel culture, it's running rampant, right? And people just wanna cancel everyone. Well, oftentimes the people leading the charge with the pitchforks and trying to like take people down, it's because that's a projection that they've done something similar or said something completely messed up like that person said or royally screwed up in the past and got called out for it. And now they wanna take people down with them or they're scared that their demons are gonna come out of the closet, their skeletons. People are gonna find out about them. And so what they do as a projection is they say, okay, that person person is terrible. I can't believe they would do something like that. And oftentimes you see it where people who lead the charge get canceled later on themselves. People paranoid in relationships about cheating are normally projecting that out because isn't it funny that it's always like the paranoid cheaters who are like going through people's phones and stalking everyone. What they see in the mirror is a lack of trust in relationships because that's what they have within themselves. There's something in our brains that want to point the finger 
but we realized there's three pointing back at us. I find it extremely humbling to have this mere principle mindset of like anything we get triggered at in the outside world, the real inner shadow work on ourselves if you wanna take this challenge, and this will make you super emotionally evolved and just like a grounded person. Anytime you find yourself getting triggered by someone or something, you stop, you remember when you point the finger, there's three pointing back at you, and you ask this, how am I that? I'm that thing that I, I get so like repulsed by or triggered by. When have I done that? How is that me? In the mirror, you can see yourselves in other people, the negative, but what's a silver lining in all this is you can see the positive as well. Next time you see someone who's like crushing it or super funny or has traits that you like, the reason you admire that person is because you have those same things within you. You have that same ability to be charismatic, to be engaging, to be witty. That's why we love before and after content. This is why we love success stories. What is inspiration? It's literally just seeing yourself in someone else's journey. You see yourself mirrored in the reflection of what's possible with other people. In my experience, the mirror of life, so to speak, when you go to change your reflection, doesn't work as fast as an actual mirror. And this is where the metaphor kind of falls apart a little. If you want something, you don't just boom, get it instantly. There's a bit of a delay time. So think of this the same way if you were to go into a coffee shop, you walk up there and you say, hey, give me one of those. They'd be like, all right, one second. They turn around and they make it for you and then they present it to you. There's a lag between what you ask for, like what you want, and when you actually receive it. I think life works the same way. There's a lag between when you decide to make a change and when you actually experience it. I've often said that your life today is a result of the actions you took 90 days ago. Your body right now, if you've ever tried to get into shape, uh, you know that it takes months of doing things perfectly before you actually start seeing results, doesn't it? Um, and it's so frustrating. That's the most frustrating part when people quit because you're doing everything right, like you're meal prepping, you're going to the gym, you got your routine dialed, and you're doing this for a week, and maybe you lose a pound or two, but your body doesn't totally transform. So you have to motivate yourself to do it for the next week. Same deal. Finally, by week three, where most people quit, you're like, dude, what, what is the point of this? I'm putting in all this effort, all this work, people quit, and their whole reality is reflected as that overweight person. They never get their dream body. But here's the thing, delay time, that the people who get what they want play with that delay time and know, yeah, it's gonna be 90 days before I see some real good results. And now the real game is can you stay excited and hold that vision of like the 2.0 you or what you want to see in the mirror? Can you hold that long enough to be consistent enough to where you overcome that delay time? The entrepreneurs you look up to who have done something great or the artists who believed in their art long enough to get it seen by millions all had to have this obsessive like delayed gratification. When they looked in the mirror, the vision they wanted for their future, it did not reflect anything that they had in their mind, but they kept it up long enough and they maintained the belief long enough and the excitement to eventually see it reflected in the mirror. You gotta be kind of crazy to think that you can make music when it's so competitive out there. The only ones who do are the ones who maintain that belief and that delusion. You gotta be kind of crazy to think that against all odds, you can start a business and you know make a doctor's salary without a college degree. But the ones who do are the ones who maintain that delusion level of belief. So maintain that belief. And the ones who quit are the ones who listen to the crowd looking in their mirror and saying, oh yeah, see, eight out of 10 businesses fail in the first three years. You know what the percentage of album sales are from new artists and streams? Those are all the victim mindset of people who have not bridged the gap in their own delay time. And going back to what we spoke about earlier, they're pointing the finger as a projection. They're saying, I couldn't do it, so now you can't. It wasn't possible for me, so I wanna take you down with me. Don't listen to it. Maintain that image in your mirror of what you want to see, that vision. That is the only way it's gonna happen for you. So don't try to look for the thing outside of you to change your entire world. Look within, and the magic question of all of this is asking yourself, not what do I want, but who do I need to become? What do I need to show up as to have that mirror reflect back exactly what I want? And then, the very important part is overcoming that delay time 
that gap between what you are doing and when it shows up. Woo, we're cooking today. All right. Do you like rants? I'm feeling ranty this year. I, I feel like we'll just sit down and do more of these. So let me know. You want our help reinventing yourself? I'll link down below our metamorphic program. Uh, if you love these videos, we've helped people just like yourself go from just, you know, kind of passively consuming YouTube content to really like implementing it in their lives. And then that mirror starts to show up as the 2.0 them in 10 weeks. So if you want a challenge and some help, I'll link that down below. If you like this video, you'll love this identity shifting playlist. That is a perfect next step. Thanks so much. See you soon. Stop settling, start living. Bye.